Hey guys, Samson here from Inside a Tiny Jungle. Um, we've gotten a lot of requests lately um, to do a kind of uh, DIY how-to video on pinning beetles specifically. Um, after we've shown a lot of our shadow boxes and stuff, like this beautiful Japanese rhinoceros beetle that I recently did. Absolutely gorgeous animal. But we've gotten quite a few requests on our live streams for kind of like a how-to live stuff like that. But during the live streams, everyone just seems to want to, uh, you know, just kind of pop on. we got a ton of people just, you know, where are the snakes? Where are the snakes? So I figured I wanted to do a content video so anyone could come on, click, see, watch it, you know, pause, rewind, whatever. So they could really soak in on how to do this. Um, it's a really, really fun hobby, insect articulation. Um, I find it to be very calming. Um, it's just something I've always enjoyed doing. So, you know, I figured we'd go ahead and get into it and do a little how-to video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, first thing we're gonna go over is the type of materials that a basic kit for a bug articulation would mean. One of the first and most basic things you're gonna need is pinning needles. Um, some of you people use T-tops like this one. Some people use the ball pin needles that got the you know little different colored balls on. But pretty much any decent sized needle will do. Um, these ones work just fine for me. Actually, I'm gonna have to get a knife to open it. So, but that's going to be the most essential tool that's going to be in your kit that you're going to want. And depending on how many insects you need to do, you know, or what kind of insect you're working with, it can take, you know, anywhere between six to a couple of dozen pins, depending on what type of insect you're trying to work with. These beetles, for me, take about, let's see here, what's this one on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like nine, ten pins, something around there. This right here is a prime example of one of the, um, ah, come here, of one of the ballpoint pins. But these ones right here are just little flathead pins, and they work just fine. Now, of course, you're gonna want a pinning surface. I use this uh, dollar store, it's like 50 cents or a dollar, a big sheet um, foam uh, paperboard. Comes in, you know, quite a few different colors. I usually just get a couple sheets of black, a couple sheets of white, and I use them for a lot of different things, but they're great for pinning insects. Of course, you're gonna want a nice, decent, sturdy set of tweezers. And that's gonna be for articulating the different limbs and moving them around in the way that you want to position them for pinning, as well as helping you spread apart wing caps and things like that. All right, now if you're working with insects that aren't soft, like this right here is actually a wet sample. You can see a little bit of moisture right there coming off. This one isn't actually is actually a wet sample, um, freshly dead specimen, and was put in a iodine solution to keep it soft and mobile. So this one's going to be really easy for us to work with right off the bat without going through rigor mortis. But I made sure to bring along a couple of dry specimens like this lesser stag beetle and this male eastern rhinoceros beetle to show you guys the process that I use for re-softening. Next is your re-softening wetting solution. What I use myself, I don't know what other people use, I know some use alcohol, high level concentrate alcohol. Um, I use acetone myself, and that's just a straight um, from the store acetone solution comes in a big jug like this. Alright, so 
So now we're going to get over to positioning. All right, ladies and gents. So first thing we're going to do is get one of our dry specimens, like our Eastern Rhinoceros Beetle here, and get our dry specimen soaking in our softening wetting solution so that they come out of rigor mortis. It's important, very important to get them properly wetted. Make sure that they get nice, good and heavily soaked. I'm actually going to do, since I've got a bigger tub here, I'm going to do two at a time. And as we get these soaking, I'll go ahead and start pinning our wet specimen. But I just want to make sure that you really want to, you know, hold them up till the hold them down to the bubble stop coming up sort of thing. As crude as that sounds, but these are already dead, so don't really have to worry about that sort of thing. And while those guys are soaking, we're gonna go ahead and get our already wet specimen, which is this beautiful large five horn beetle. And we're gonna start getting him pinned. So now the first thing to do when pinning and articulating a beetle is to kind of, you can use your fingers or your tweezers, you know, and you just want to kind of loosen up and stretch the arms out and just kind of see how all he bends. Being very, very gentle, of course. And if you're working with a specimen that's been dried and then wetted, they're gonna have a little slight stiffness to them before they give. You just gotta be gentle and make sure that you're getting the stiffness and not breaking. This guy's actually got a couple of small worms on him from the uh, habitat he was in from the breeder, when he baggaged him apparently, must have had some eggs on him. So then we have to decide whether or not we're gonna make this a open specimen or a closed specimen. So we're gonna kind of stretch him out here, see what he looks like laid out and open without his wings out. And we're gonna decide whether or not we're gonna do him as a open span or closed span specimen. Now looking at him right here, he is a beautifully large beetle. Very gorgeous. He's actually the largest beetle that we have to work with right now. So I mean, I really would love to see the wingspan on him. But once you get the wings open, it's very hard to get it properly closed back the way that the beetle would close it. So if you're gonna open the wings and make it a open case, open wingspan specimen, you wanna make sure that you are dead sure that that's exactly what you want to do. Because once you crack the wing case open, you're pretty much dead set on it. And there's not much going back. To be honest, I think I may do this one as a closed wing specimen since most of the other ones I've done are open wing specimens. But at the same time, I do think that it is nice to be able to show them open wing. So you know what, we're just gonna go ahead and do him open wing. So we're gonna wanna make sure to kind of have it, you know, long ways for our piece of parchment. Gently pick him back up. Now you're gonna to wanna to use your nails here if you can, or if you can't, use a small knife or something like that. Get directly underneath this cup right here and pull up, slowly but firmly. Get a nice crease in there. And once you get a nice crease in there, you're gonna be able to get your finger in and pull that wing cap up. 
once it kind of, you'll feel a little snap there, don't worry, you didn't break it. It's just you've kind of released it. Once you've released the first one, the second one comes very easily. Second one always comes a little easier. Now we can see him as a wide open specimen. Now I'm gonna kinda lay him back down, get him kinda half repositioned where I wanted him. Now some of these, like this one right here, I can tell the bloke had a few uh, parasites on him. I see a couple small insects. That's not uncommon in these um, captive specimens. Now, next thing we're gonna do is check the wingspan. Gonna unfold, their wings kind of fold backwards a little bit, like that. And then you want to gently open up and spread the wings. Now, once you get the wings to start spreading out, they'll kind of half stay out. And right now I'm kind of having to pick off these uh, little creepy crawly worms that are on this guy. I know that's gross, guys. You don't actually see that a lot when you find dried specimens outside. But if you're getting captive specimens that have never gotten dried, it's not uncommon that while they, when they first died, that insects laid some eggs on them and if they stayed wetted, then those insect eggs would hatch and you'd end up with little larvae. It's kind of gross looking, but when you do this like I do quite often, it's not that much of a surprise. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do is get these wings secured. Well, actually, sorry. <laughs> Reverse. First thing I'm going to want to do is get the beetle itself secured. And what I'm going to do that is by taking a primary pin. This will be the first pin of the day. And get it right here, dead in the center, between the two wing caps, right in the hardest part of the insect. And that's going to go all the way through the insect. And into... Ah, bugger. I don't know what happened. I heard a snapping sound. I guess my knife thing just slipped but it doesn't look like there's any damage to the beetle, luckily. Thanks the, thank the gods for that. So, next thing is going to be to secure the wings and the wing caps up. So, first wing cap. So there's the first wing cap. And the, until you get, you know, a couple of things on each side done, and you want to do them back to forth evenly. I'm sorry that my fingers keep kind of blocking the view, guys. But you want to do them kind of back to forth rather evenly. And make sure, that kind of makes sure that your uh, work here is going to be semi-symmetrical. Because that's the main, that's one of the most attractive things about the insect world is just how symmetrical everything is. So, of course, see, that's why I like to use these longer pins right here, is because it's a little bit easier. There we go. 
go. Now we need to get needle ready. You're going to want to pin through the joint right here. You know, pull the wing out. And once you get it to where you want it, then you're gonna sink that pin. And then you're gonna wanna do the same thing on the other side. It's okay if it gets crooked on your sheet, as long as you're getting it right symmetrical on the insect itself and of course you know you're going to want to check through and everything not everyone is going to be perfectly symmetrical and that's okay it happens Sometimes getting the needles in can be a bit of a pain, but there we go. And of course, I'm still dealing with some of these uh, some of these little insects here. So now I'm going to lift him up and show you what we got so far. Very beautiful, very large insect. Now we need to use our tweezers to articulate the different feet. However, we want them. In this case, I'm going for kind of a closed in look. And I'm using, in this one, I'm using what's called the cross pin technique, which is where I'm crisscrossing two needles over an appendage to keep that appendage still so it doesn't move during drawing. This method takes a little bit more finesse and it takes more needles, of course, but it's a little bit more of an exact method. And also, um, it's a little bit easier when you're working with smaller pins. But also kind of gives you a more exact ability. And as you see right here, you know, it's not perfectly symmetrical, but it's rather close. I'm giving them kind of a bow-legged approach to show how big and wide and buff this beetle is. Now we're gonna move on to the back legs over here. Same thing, using the tweezers to kind of move the appendages around and see how we want them. I'm bowing the legs here a little bit. And then once again, for these back legs, I'm gonna use the cross pin technique. It's easier once you get one down because then you can see exactly how that one's done. And then you can kind of look and use the, the beautiful thing about the cross pin technique is that if you've got enough finger dexterity, you can kind of use it to clench like this, kind of scissor onto the little joints and kind of drag it to where you can match the other side. And 
not quite on this side. Ah, it is. It's just the bum has moved a little bit. The bum's still a little bit wiggly. See, it's not absolutely perfect, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close to symmetrical, and the thing with this is that you want it as close to symmetrical as possible. So that's why I'm gonna adjust this wing right here a little bit. Just like that. All right. Now we can look at the uh, middle legs here in the thorax and see how we want them. Personally, I'm making this look like he's kind of doing the Superman thing. I'm giving him kind of a mid-flight look, so I'm going to do the legs a little bit further back. If it was doing a closed specimen, I'd probably have them going straight out to the side or even going towards the front. But since we're doing an open wing specimen, anything to the side would be covered by the wing. You wouldn't really be able to see it, but if we don't pin them somehow, then when it dries, they're just going to go kind of willy-nilly and do their own thing. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this one back like that. And I'm going to use that as my frame of reference for the next side. And just like that. And there we go. This is our fully pinned first wet specimen. A little stinky, I don't like having my face too close to it, I'm gonna admit to you. And it looks kind of dirty and everything, but as he dries up and everything, all those will dry up. And then once he's gotten into rigor mortis, then we will be able to um, remove the pins and everything and put them onto something cleaner looking for pinning. Now one thing, last thing that we can do with him is because he is a rhinoceros type beetle, we can lower his head and give his horn a wider breadth forward, making him look a little bit bigger. Once again, for that, we're gonna use the cross pin method. Now this we're gonna to have to be a little tricky about because we're gonna to have to do a little higher up. Use the very tips of our fingers because we don't want to accidentally press down the rest of the beetle. Actually, you know what, let me go ahead and turn him around and I'll come at him from this angle. I'm gonna go ahead and try to do. There we go. There we pinned his horn down, gave his horn a wider breadth from his head, making him, of course, look like an evil. Because the one of the keys that you want to do on these, if you're working with a large beetle, then you might as well make it look as large as you possibly can. And with that wingspan, if you look, I mean, he's about as large as my hand. That is a massive beetle, and it's going to be absolutely brilliant to go in a shadow box. They've got a really nice... Um, iridescent brown yellow kind of like a tiger's eye color on their wing caps very deep deep black on the head beautifully large horns on these five horn beetles great great wingspan i cannot wait to see this guy i completely finished dried up and in a shadow box so there we go that was our first ever wet specimen beetle articulation Alright guys, moving on to our previously dried, now wetted specimens. These guys have been sitting in here for the entire time that we were doing our last specimen, which was this beautiful large five horn beetle. And now we're moving on to our Eastern Hercules beetle. 
and our lesser male stag beetle. I'm going to set these guys down here for a moment. It's hard to pick some of these guys up, but the tongs, when they're this bloody big, that's a huge beetle. Now, I guess the first one we'll work on is the little stag beetle, since that's going to be the smaller, more intricate one. We're going to be doing this one as a closed articulation. So the first thing we're going to want to do, since this was a dried, pre-now wetted specimen, is just kind of loosen up all the different bits. So first thing is going to be prying these jaws apart. They are really on there. Jeez, these guys have a grip, even in death, I tell ya. I cannot even get it open. Ah, there we go. Finally, I tell ya, that rigor mortis grip on these beetles, and that was just one side that actually loosened up. We still have a whole nother side. I swear the head's gonna come off before this loosens. Even this one that we did already loosen is still kind of tight. But I really want to have this loosen. So what I'm going to do is try to put the knife right here. I want to get a good firm grip down here because we don't want it to break. Get the knife down here. And kind of, there we go. Now we've got it pried wide open. Now we're going to start grabbing uh, some of these limbs and getting them loosened up. They're going to, of course, be a little bit stiff because of the rigor mortis, but they should loosen up with a, just a very little pressure. Of course, the bigger beetles have a little bit more um, stiffness to them, so they're a little bit harder to re-soften a little bit harder to move but they should move for you pretty easily all right so now we've got our beetle loosened up Now it's time to start our little bit of pinning. And of course, once again, we're gonna use cross pin technique on this guy. First things first is to do the primary pin straight through the abdomen. Or sorry, not the abdomen, the uh, thorax. Ah, okay, so we got it through the bug, but we didn't get it all the way into the paper, apparently. So, once again, just a little bit more pressure. Get it through into the paper. There we go. So there's the primary pin. Keep the bug on here. Now we just kind of move around with the tweezers and try to kind of halfway get him positioned the way we want him before we start really getting the pins laid down. Get these spread out the way we want them. 
Now this one's kind of a little bit of just kind of like a half job because he isn't a perfect specimen. He is missing um, part of one leg and two parts of another leg. So we're just kind of doing him um, for this uh, little uh, do-it-yourself thing. You want his legs stretched out. Maybe pin it down just like that. Same thing with the back leg. Another two pins. And of course you can expect your bug until you get a few pins in him to hold him down real well. You're gonna expect him to kind of move back and forth a little bit. He doesn't have to be exactly straight with the uh, surface, just as long as you can see that he's getting somewhat uh, symmetrical on both sides. Pin down these right here. And then the last ones are pinning. Yeah. If I can actually get my needle up without poking the hell out of myself. Right here. Now, with the stag beetle, since he does have these big jaws, we want to make sure that those jaws stay open. So we're going to pin. That's the main reason we're actually doing him is because we want to kind of emphasize on when doing these kind of beetles if you want to make them look good look cool then you want to make sure to pin their horns the right way to really show how impressive they are so that right there is our lesser stag beetle really nice specimen not a huge beetle not as big as the five horn you know right around size of my thumb up to the one knuckle. All right, so that's our second pin bug right there. The last one we have is this male Eastern Hercules beetle. Now this one is almost perfect with the exception of uh, one missing leg piece. But we're not gonna stop, uh, not gonna let that stop us as he is a super gorgeous, very impressive large male beetle. Want to make sure that we can get all the different legs moved around the way that they need to move and that they're supposed to move. So now that we've got all the legs mobile, Want to make sure that we can get the head mobile as well. Because we kind of want to... There we go. You want to make sure that you're not spreading it too far because you don't want to accidentally decapitate your beautiful large specimen. But you do want to make sure that he's decently wide open. Now we're going to go for the wing caps. We're putting these up. This one's actually being pretty decent. I know you guys have seen me before have some trouble with wing caps, but these ones are actually being pretty decent to us and opening up rather nicely. There we go. All right, now that we've got everything moving, everything's moving around, everything's out of rigor mortis, now we'll start putting our pins through him. I'm gonna start with this nice big primary pin. It's gonna go right here through this little point here in the thorax. You'll hear a couple crunching sounds. Crunch, crunch, crunch. There we go, there is our primary pin. 
Make sure to get these wing caps opened up and mobile. You want those out of your way for doing one of these open articulations. Fingers are getting a little bit slippery now <laughs> from all these different needles. So, first pin for the wing cap, go right under here. That's gonna keep that wing cap there. You can see, I put that right there, right in between the wing cap and the abdomen, and it kind of keeps the wing cap from folding down. They fold down kind of like the suicide doors on a Lamborghini. So you just put one little pin right there to prevent it from happening. And then we do the same thing with the next pin. Gonna open up that wing cap. Feed this through. Oop, this wing cap actually broke a little bit. That's all right though, because what we can do is feed that needle through right there. and poke this wing cap right back on. As long as the insect behaves, there we go, pop. It's gonna be here another small pop. Actually, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and take both of these wing caps off because I can glue them back on at the end. The important thing is to show off this wingspan. That's our main focus right here. So we're gonna take our tweezers, grab the tip of the wing and pull that out like that. Reposition it and grab right where the uh, bend of the wing is. Grab one of our pins. There's a little hole right there at the bend of the wing. Put it through right there. Reopen your wing as wide as you need it to be. And sink your pin. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Open up that wing. Get a pin. Go through that wing cap. Get your tweezers. Rewind the wing all the way to where you need it. And sink your pin. All right, now we've got wide open wings. And now we can start worrying about cross pinning and positioning the legs. So, we got the wings pinned, we're going to look at the legs, get them kind of positioned out, stretched out where we want them. 
once again, just like the last open articulation we did, we're gonna do this one kind of, you know, a little bit of a Superman pose. This particular beetle is not wanting to cooperate very much. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and now that we've snipped off the little extra bits, we can make it a little bit more symmetrical. I think this particular one, I'm gonna do the legs. facing forward, at least I'm going to try to as much as I can, you know what, I may do them facing backwards, it's hard to tell, all I know is that I'm having a hard time getting these two front legs to go symmetrical for me, for some reason or another. I think it's this pot right here won't bend for me the way that I'm wanting it to. That's what it is. So instead, I'll just improvise and make him look like he's got kind of a crawling bow-legged look. Two pins in one leg, two pins in the other. There we go, got those legs pinned up. Now we can get these back legs done, because they're gonna be a little bit easier to position. I'm gonna do the back legs kind of widespread. Once again, doing cross pin method to keep them down and keep them where I need them. Because once again, guys, like I said before, these guys can have a tendency to move around as they dry. So even if you find them dying or wetted and you move them around where you want, chances are when they go into rigor mortis, they're going to kind of curl and shrivel up. So the only way to properly prevent that happening is to pin them. Now that we've got all the other appendages pinned, we can kind of work with these back legs a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is try to pin them outstretched as far as possible this way. So I've got one pin right there. Another pin right here, and that keeps that leg down. I'm going to try to do the same thing for this other side. One pin down, and one more to go. So now we've got that guy properly pinned. Want to make sure that his rhino horn is properly stretched. And of course, to make sure it stays stretched, we can try to pin it down. Put one right there. It's of course going to tilt it to the side a little bit, but that'll even out when we put our other pin like this. 
and use that to stretch the horn down. That's going to keep the horn nice and wide, as you can see. And that is our Eastern Rhino Beetle articulation. This is a little bit rough one, was not a perfect specimen to begin with. But once it dries up, we'll be able to do a little bit of patchwork on it. But at least for the most part, it is a whole specimen. It's still a nice, large rhinoceros beetle. So I'm still, of course, I'm really grateful to work on that. So, thanks so much, guys, for hanging out with me, for learning how to articulate these insects. And, of course, for hitting the subscribe button, for liking the video, any comments you leave. If there's any other insects that you'd like to see us articulate, anything new you want to see us to stretch out on besides just beetles, of course, check out our Etsy store and everything else. Big love, guys. As always, stay safe out there, but most importantly, have fun, make an adventure out of it, live a life worth living. I hope to catch you guys next time right here inside a tiny jungle.